Okay. Tracy, sorry this took me so long to do. Um, so, I was asked basically for how to find out what our spirit wants us to do in this life, which is a huge question. It's a huge answer. There's so many things. Um, and it's normal to want to know. I want to know. I want to know where the end of my journey is. So maybe I can get there faster. Or maybe I can make better choices. Things like that. And it doesn't really work that way. Um, there's a great movie that I have um, called Finding Joe. You can get it on Amazon. Um, I, I, I send it out to people who take my classes so that um, they can just, you know, watch this movie, Finding Joe, it's called. But, uh, so basically, okay, so for example, in my life, I worked my ass off to be an airline pilot, and I thought that I was going to stay an airline pilot, because I thought that, you know, I may or may not get married, I may or may not have kids, but I was happy doing the job that I wanted to do. I worked really hard to get there. And um, my father one time said, well, you know, if you get married and you have, and you want to have kids someday and you want to, you know, quit. <laughs> I was like, are you kidding me? I would never quit. I would never quit. I worked way too hard for this. I got actually angry with him for even suggesting that I would quit a flying career for kids or anybody because you just work too way too hard uh but when things the way the, when my life played out i was furloughed um on march 3rd 2003 so 3303 i was furloughed and then when i was called back i was pregnant with my first and uh so i deferred like everybody does because if you go back you're you're going to be sitting in the low point drain of whatever airline you're at and um, never flying, you're going to be sitting on reserve, you're going, to, you're going to work more days than anybody else, you know, reservists at the bottom of the list work the most. So everybody pretty much defers the first time, pretty much, not, not 100% of course, not 100% of anything is true, keep that in mind. Um, so when they called me back, I just had my son and... I was like, I couldn't leave that baby for anything because um, my husband and I lived in uh, Redding, Connecticut, and I would have had to go back to probably Chicago. So I would have had to pay a nanny to basically raise my son. And I just felt so lucky to be as old as I was having a baby. And I just couldn't stop staring at him. There was just no way I was going to leave him. And there was no way I was going to pay someone else to do to, to be able to stare at him. So that I could go back to like sitting on reserve in Chicago. I did it already. So, but, you know, the day that I got so mad at my dad for saying, well, if you have kids, you could quit. I got so mad. I rounded on him like, are you kidding me? Are you out of your mind? But then when when my life unfolded when I, and the, that choice came up, it was very clear what I was going to do. So the way I look at it, and you can look at it however you want, but so I basically look at it like all I know is, since I play this all I know is game with my clients and with my students, all I know is what? All I know is what? And all I know is in this moment, because I, I don't even know what tomorrow, I may feel different tomorrow, but um, my father-in-law um, was a hero of mine. One of the big reasons that he was my hero, one of my heroes, was that he could make a decision pretty quickly based on the information that he already had. He could find out a second later that he should that a, that a, the opposite choice would have been better, but he had no. Um, he didn't beat himself up. He didn't go over and over and over and over. He would just say, "Well, you know, I made the best choice." in the time, at the time with the information I had in that moment. So he was fine with it. Um, and I watched him do that and I was just like, man, I wish I could do that. I wish I could be like that. So, you know, when you look at people who you're like, 
if you want to be like them, this is going to sound like a tangent, but I, but it's not. Nothing is. I never know what's going to come out of my mouth after I push that little red button. Um, but my, um, I loved that about my father-in-law and loving it about him and then saying, man, I love that about him. Good for him. Um, man, I wish I could be like that. So me wishing that I could be like that, wanting to be like that from a place of love, from a place of good for him. Um, and I think that's why my husband's so successful because he's so, he's like, good for that guy, good for that lady, good for her, good for him. He doesn't have any jealousy. Like, I didn't just, I've never met a human being that has less jealousy than my husband. It just doesn't exist. He's always, whenever anybody's doing great, he's like, wow, good for them. They're doing awesome. And I think that's what brings him good fortune and good business sense and stuff like that. And I think a lot of people operate from um, the Willy Wonka and the 10 golden tickets. And if you have one of the golden tickets, then you decrease their chances of having a golden ticket. So uh, that's why teaching children and teaching um, about abundance is so important that you know, there's more than enough for everyone. Not everybody wants the same thing, you know, so we don't have to get all worried that, oh, all those golden tickets have been found. So I'm going to hate the people who have it because I'm jealous of the people that have the golden tickets because they decrease my chance of getting a golden ticket. And that's just not true. It's just not true. There's the thing called abundance that you need to understand. The interesting, cool thing about the universe is when you say, good for that person, that is awesome. I'm so happy for them. That is a way that seems to be built into the universe to bring that thing to you. So now I make these decisions. I make these choices. And like, I make a video. I could watch and go, ooh, I can cringe in certain parts. But I'm still not going to redo it because it's just done. And it's like, oh, well. So in, in my love for my father-in-law and my love for the way he could just make a decision and then move on from that I feel like I am moving into that space um and then and then the opposite's true so if someone is jealous of you know um, I've seen a lot of people get jealous of me a lot of people um, a lot of women have wanted to be my friend and they're so they're, they're like my best friend they want to be my best friend and they just love me so much and they're like, this is great, this is great. And then at some point it seems to change. They don't seem to understand that I'm manifesting things. Um, it's not just getting handed to me. You know, there's some, there's work involved that I'm actually doing behind the scenes with my mind, um, deliberately thinking a certain way. And this is why I'm writing a book, um, is to teach people how I think. Not that I'm the best and not that I'm the, the one to follow, but I'm happier than so many people that if you just, if I can just teach people how to think like me and, um, and then you do, I, you know, then you can live happier. That's all. I just want more people to be happy. Um, cause I'm, I'm really happy <laughs> and I've gone through a lot of really bad crap. I've gone through crap, not the worst. You know, but I've gone through stuff. I haven't had everything handed to me. And the stuff that, you know, the negative stuff has really given me an appreciation for the positive stuff. And then that's how I see who I really am when I go through challenges and stuff. Okay. When people become jealous of me, when people get jealous of me, that's the way the universe uses to keep what you want away from you. It seems to be very simple. It seems like if you're like, good for that person, they're abundant, good for them, they have healthy, beautiful children, or whatever. Whatever you bless or like appreciate about another person's life from a, from a perspective of love, that you're like, good for them. You know, because namaste consciousness is, we are all one, and you know, I honor the divinity in you, which is also in me. And if I'm like, good for them, from a place of that namaste, that place of good for like us, because you're doing awesome good for us, like good for you, but I'm happy that there's another happy person. I'm actually honoring the namaste consciousness and I'm actually like connecting with that other person 
as if it's my uh, it's my good fortune too, in a loving, um, united way. When I do it like, like that, but when I say what the what the hell? Why can't I have that? Why did they get it? Why did they get it? It's that is um, you know that's fear. As we've talked about, you either come from love or you come from fear. And when you come from love, you're like good for them, and you're in the namaste consciousness. That's where the universe goes. Okay, so you want that. Um, open your arms and get ready to receive it. When you're, but you, when you're, you know, angry and fearful, like how come they get it and I don't, and I work so much harder. And blah, blah, blah. Now, I'm not going to go into how, um, you know, some forms of envy slash jealousy are healthy because they show you what you actually want. Um, wow, look what they have. Hmm. I didn't realize, but I see the way I feel about what they have, and now I realize I want it. Like that, that can be used in a positive, healthy way. So, not all jealousy slash envy is bad. I don't want to, I don't want to equate one with the other words. It's much too complicated for that. But it, how do you, how do you deal with the other? Okay, this is what it is. Do you deal with the other in a loving way? It's like good for you. Or do you deal with the other and like, screw you. What? Why do you have it? I should have it. Why should you? Why do you have it and I don't? That form of jealousy is the way that the universe goes, oh, well, we're not going to give her that. Okay. Um, now back to Tracy asked, uh, wants to know what, basically, what's the end point? And... You know, the movie Finding Joe makes the point of, you know, if you if you imagine, well, I make this point actually, but it goes along with Finding Joe. Imagine that your soul, and if you believe in God or whatever you believe in, but your soul, which is part of spirit, and just imagine this. And I'm not saying this is exactly how it is. I'm just saying this is an easy way to comprehend um, this uh, concept. Imagine that your soul is part of this part of spirit decides it wants to come in to a human existence and it sets up a life for you it, it designs it from soup to nuts you're going to be born to these people these are going to be your siblings and you make all these soul um, soul contracts with siblings parents friends enemies and on and on and on um you in your soul designs your life like a um, yeah. roller coaster. Okay, so so it goes up and around and around the bend and up, maybe even to the loop, the loop a couple times, whatever. Your soul designs this uh, course for you, um, and when you take physical form, you're basically getting into the little wagon. Where there's no steering control, there's no brakes, there's no um, gas or brake. And the only way to get off of the ride is to kill yourself by jumping to your death. So that's how I see life. Like, my soul designed this ride for me. My soul, before I came in, before I was born into this physical body, um... My soul designed a whole bunch of things for me to learn, for me to go through, for me to celebrate, for me to, um, some things I desire and I get, and some things I desire and I don't get. It's so like I desired three children, um, but I have two healthy, beautiful kids, and I had like five miscarriages. I know I give you guys way too much information, but the point is that, um, I don't, just because I want to manifest three children, doesn't mean I'm going to always get it. My soul has, I allow that. My soul has designed into this journey, this ride, you know, this one ride through as Carla. Okay. Put the desire for three children, but only allowed me to have two children and, and then let me experience you know, as many miscarriages as it takes until I get, okay, not going to get three. 
now what are you gonna do now what are you gonna do um if i look at my life and i can trust my soul if i look at my life as a ride and it's just a one time through i think it's easier i think it's easier to allow the ups and downs okay so what happens is for me, the way I see it and the way I try and teach it is you, you, um, you're in a cloud bank. So, so I, 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 there's a cloud bank and it's right here, right? So I, I am wherever I am. I am. I'm just right here. I'm where I am. And the cloud bank's here. And once in a while, the cloud bank will move back. It'll move away from me. And then there'll be a step that appears. And that's my, all I know is I take this step. So all I know is I'm going to take this step. And the cloud bank's right there in form of that step. And then at some point the cloud bank will move. And maybe the step goes to the left or goes to the right. And so um, then it's, again, the cloud bank moves back. And all I know is this. So I take that step. Okay. Now, um, I don't have anything against Italians. Okay. Uh, or people who are older than me, but my type all through high school, all through uh, my type, as far as guys go, was blonde hair, blue eyed, like surfer type. Oh, that reminds me. Happy birthday, Keith. I should, uh, my first love. Um, and, um, I love, I love him. His birthday was November 1st, but anyway, blonde hair, blue eyed. He was the typical, that was, that was my type hundred percent. And um, my age, well, he was a year older, but whatever. But mostly my age or younger was who I went for. And I ended up marrying an Italian who was 11 years older than me. And, um, and I can't imagine being married to somebody else, you know. So, anyway, if someone had told me. If someone really, honestly, when I was a, when I was a pilot for United, if somebody had said you're gonna lose your job um, on this day, uh, you're gonna marry an Italian who's 11 years older than you. You're gonna have two kids. You are going to basically stop flying altogether for years. You're gonna fly hang gliders for a little bit, but that's it. it. That's Gonna, and the, and all airplane stuff is going to dry right up. And you're, you're not going to fly maybe ever again in your life. I would cry for days and days and days. And then, and then I wouldn't have put the energy that I ended up putting into all my flying that I did. To, try, you know, to try and be perfect. Fly perfect. I always, I always told my students, my flight students, whenever they went solo, I'd say, okay, fly perfect. And they thought I was kidding at first. I'm like, I'm serious, you know. It costs a lot of money to run an airplane. You're paying money to fly that plane. Uh, you you only get to be up there for a certain amount of time. Be perfect. Just be perfect the entire time. Use every second. Be totally present and keep that. See if you can nail your heading. See if you can nail your altitude. Um, we had these. There's a when you do when you have really bad weather there's this thing called an ILS instrument landing system and it gives you um, glide slope which is high low and it also gives you uh, the course needle and so you keep keep the tube pegged and you want to try and keep it like this all the way to the ground and it's like fly perfect oh, it's the best it feels so good when you just nail those needles and you just keep them perfect the entire way down there's nothing like it but if you're like eh this is fine. I'm within a dot or two, and this is fine. You're not really <laughs> totally present and totally enjoying your life. And so, um, all I knew was that I wanted to be a pilot. All I knew was that I was a pilot. All I knew was that I, I got to where I wanted to be. I got on the airplane that I wanted. Um, I wouldn't have put the energy in. If I had known that it was all going to like go away on 3303, if I had known that I was just going to end up just, you know, being a mother, you know, if I had known that I was just going to do this, I would never, I wouldn't have studied every single day. I wouldn't have, I didn't go out. I didn't drink. I, you know, I was very serious about it. I wouldn't have done that. I would live differently and, and I wouldn't have the memories that I had. I had 
really cool memories. Like really, um, I just had some really, there's an old man, he's probably not alive any, any longer, but he told me, young lady, I've never seen anybody. I've never seen anyone fly a simulator like that. And he said, if you, I'm not allowed to tell you this, but if you don't get this job, you need to make some phone calls. So you had to be there. It was quite a moment because they're really not allowed to give you any feedback, but it was very cool. And he couldn't hear me. So I ended up flying a simulator jet all by myself. They're supposed to help you from the back, but he couldn't hear my voice because uh, cause I'm a girl, I guess, or it's in a tone that older people don't hear um, for whatever reason. Anyway, um, but I wouldn't have had that experience because I wouldn't have been fly perfect, fly perfect, fly perfect. Um, so all you know is what, all you know is what, um, and I'm not going to try and give you some, some freaking bumper sticker or mug thing that's, and I appreciate these things that it's about the journey. It is about the journey, but that doesn't help you. I understand when you just want to know, I used to have these dreams constantly where I was just trying to move forward and the air was like worse than water, trying to move through water. I was like trying to get, I, in these dreams, I'd forgotten my son was in the car and I was like, oh my God, I have to get back to him. I forgot that I left him in the car and I can't get back and I'm pushing and I'm pushing and I'm pushing. And, and so I kept having these dreams. Then you write these things down. If you, if you write your dreams down, then you start looking for patterns. And then if you meditate on what the pattern is, and if you ask sincerely in your heart, like, what are you trying to tell me? Because I see this pattern. And then they told me like, you keep trying to see what's going to happen. You, you, you keep pushing ahead. You're nowhere near the present moment. You're not being present at all. You're not enjoying what's happening right now at all. You just keep pushing to get to what's in, what's going to happen in five minutes and in five minutes and in an hour and in a day and in a week and in a month and a year. Um, so I totally get, I, that's my, my only point is that I totally get, you think that you want to know. And that's what keeps you from being present. You think you want to know, where am I supposed to be? Well, you're supposed to be exactly where you are. Let's start there. I had one client who was um, adorable. But she kept, she tried so hard. I mean, she kept trying so hard that uh, her, her guides or angels or whoever tells me things showed me it's like this. She's in a fishbowl. Like, imagine her in a fishbowl. We keep putting her up here. And she uses all of her energy to swim down here. She uses all of her energy to swim to the bottom of the bowl. So then we have to keep putting her back where we want her. So that things can happen correctly in divine time. She uses all of her energy to swim back down. It's like, we don't like tell her to stop. Just stop. Because she keeps wasting all this energy. And then, we, then they keep having to set things up. If you can trust... If you can trust that your life is happening in divine timing and that you're exactly where you're supposed to be, doing exactly what you're supposed to be doing, then you create that. You create that not just through law of attraction. You create that not just through um, being a powerful conscious creator. You, you set that up to be true. It's just like something of, that's just my luck. And they, and they talk about how bad their luck is. Then they keep having bad luck. It's the same thing. When I say, that's my luck, that's probably what I would say after I won the lottery. It's just my luck to win. <laughs> because I'm just lucky. And I've always said, and I've had shit happen to me, that's not lucky. And people go, what the hell? And even my own mom, she thought her life was great. And I was like, are you out of your mind? Your life was awful. Your life sounds like hell. She's like, if you pick out all the bad parts and that's what you talk about and that's the story you tell, sure, my life sounds awful, but you forget about all the really beautiful, cool things. So my mom had a real appreciation. Um, and I know that's difficult, but I feel like anyone listening to me is trying to get this. You're trying to understand, how can I get there? How can I get there? And here's how, here's how you get there. You stop. You just stop. And you go... Okay, uh, I live in a perfectly evolving universe and everything that's happening is happening for me, not to me. 
I got a million stories to tell you of things that if I looked at it as happening to me, I would be curled up in a ball. If I look at it as this is happening for me, then I'm like, okay, well, I'm, I'm about to make a turn here. Something's, something's going to happen, you know, um, and crazy things can happen when you come from the perspective of, okay, well, this must, this is happening for me. It's not happening to me. Everything's happening in my highest best interest uh, because I live in a perfectly evolving universe and everything's happening in divine timing in the perfect way, even if it feels uncomfortable, even if it's awful. Um, so my dad falling, uh, so I recently had surgery, my dad fell, I haven't been able, I had not been able to take painkillers, I had not been able to rest the way I'm supposed to. Um, I got really squeezed for the last two weeks. I've been really, really pushed. Um, and out of it came some of the most beautiful stuff. Like, I, I'll cry if I even start talking about, like, so much beauty has come out of the last two weeks of hardship. And quickly. And, and I know it's my mindset. I know it's my mindset. Okay. So with your spirit, you don't get to know. Okay, like for instance, I've always kept my mouth shut. Uh, I was best friends with someone that I just disagreed with 90% of everything that they said. But it was okay because um, I just kept my mouth shut. If I disagreed with people, I just kept my mouth shut. If I didn't have something nice to say, I didn't say anything at all. I took that to a whole new level and I know there's a lot of women out there that do the same thing. You know, what happened was I ended up with thyroid disorder. It was called Hashimoto's thyroiditis. And I actually had a tumor on my throat. I, I actually had a tumor on my thyroid. Um, I don't want to go too far into it because I think I've talked about it before. But in order to heal the fifth chakra, it's uh, about um, self-expression and communication. I did what I do energy wise, healing wise. I called on Archangel Michael to, to, to heal my thyroid to 100%. Never ask to feel better. I've said this before. Always ask for 100%. Heal me 100%. Heal it back to 100%. And just ask. Ask and expect that it's going to happen. Because you deserve it. You just, eh, not deserve, but it's just the way it is. Just to ask. Um, you're, you're here to be loved. You're here to love and be loved. And when you when you like, well, that's got to be true. Because why else would I be here? I'm here to have enjoy myself. I'm here to love, be loved, have fun. I'm here to you know interact and learn, and have experiences. Not I'm not here for everything to go perfectly, but I am here to have experiences. And I trust that my soul set up a cool roller coaster ride for me to go on. I have to trust that. But when you do. You go, okay, well, that's that's what's happening now. Okay, well, okay, well. If you look at a roller coaster and you decide to get on, you sit down, you put your little belt on, that metal thing comes, and you're like, okay. And when you see, but you can see on the roller coaster, oh, a right turn's coming up, oh, a dip's coming up, oh, a hill's coming up. So you can see. But the thing is, when you take physical form in life, you're still getting on a roller coaster cart. You just can't see the turns. You can't see the ups and the downs. You can't see what's coming. Um, try and make that fun. Try and try and make that part of the adventure. It's an adventure. And just trust your soul. Okay, I trust you. You're doing this for a reason. Some of the nastiest, most horrible things that I've gone through have um, set me up for the, some of the most wonderful things. I mean, it is that simple. It really is that simple. When, so I had my son on November 3rd, 2007. I was too tired to like be able to like handle what was going on. I'm not going to go into my birth experience because I don't want to scare anybody away from having children. It was awful. Um, but the next night, and I held that tiny little baby. Well, he was actually a monster. He was actually really huge. When I held him, and his tiny little fingers were touching my necklace, he had 
tiny little fingertips touching my necklace. And I just sat there in the rocking chair at the hospital and just, just cried so softly. And I was like, <laughs> everything I went through was worth this moment. Like that moment, not even that hour. I mean, that moment, the feeling, the feeling of those little tiny fingers, the looking at his face, looking at his feet, looking at this baby. I had a baby. Oh my God. I had a baby. You don't know me well enough to know. If you knew me in high school, I bet people, most of my friends from high school be like, she'll probably never have kids. She's, she's nuts. But I had this baby and I was like, this moment is worth every single ounce of pain that I've ever been through. And like in that moment, anything I ever thought was a mistake, anything that I went over and over and over, I shouldn't have stayed there. I should have just gone home. I shouldn't have gone there. I should have just done this. I, I should have stayed away from that. Why didn't I do this instead? It would have saved me all this pain, all this near death stuff, all these things. If I had just, if I had just, if I had just, and I held that baby and I felt those tiny freaking fingers. That was my son's fingers. When I felt that, I was like, I'd go through all that bullshit again right now to get back to this moment. So anyway, life is not meant to be known what's, you know, what's going to happen. All right. Um, I'm going to do a meditation. This is already 31 minutes. So I'm going to separate out the meditation. I'm going to do a, uh, a separate meditation so that you can keep doing the meditation, but I'm going to explain it right now. Basically, <laughs> it's going to seem strange. Um, and I'm taking a big chunk of it from the Holistic Learning Center, HLC, out of New Jersey, the, um, the Spiritual Life Coaching Certification Program that I'm, that I'm in, uh, that I love, that I respect. It's just amazing. So I'm taking a chunk of um, what he already came up with, Hugh Dalconzo. He's awesome. And um, maybe someday you'll end up becoming a spiritual life coach through them. Or maybe someday you'll end up um, being my client through them. Or taking a class from me through them. Um, because I, I plan on going pretty far with them. I love them so much. So I want to give them the respect and the credit. Uh, but then, so they gave me tools for my toolbox. But then my, the, 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 uh, all my meditations that I do are guided by, you know, the angels and stuff. I know it sounds crazy to some people, but to a lot of people, less and less people, it sounds crazy. Uh, so I'm going to have you breathe in a weird way and stuff. Just, just do it. And it'll get easier and easier and easier. But I want to separate it out so that you can just do the meditation every day. But what's going to happen as you do the meditation is, you're going to connect with your spirit and I want you to be conscious when you do the meditation of uh, fear-based voices or fear-based feelings. That's your ego mind. So your ego mind is going to chime in like, oh, are you sure you want to do this? So the way I do it is I take that and I say, it's okay, ego. And I separate it out and I put it to the, to the side and, and down a little. So I say, it's okay. And, and so I take whatever comes up in the form of fear, uh, whether it's words or uh, feelings or um, like if you're, because so, for me, I check in with my heart rate. Um, is it up? And my stomach also, I look for, is my stomach up? For me, when my stomach is up or my heart rate is up, that means I'm not grounded that, that's fear to me. That's how I read fear coming up in my body, rising in my body and down and clearing that out. Anyway, so if you feel any of those things, you can check in with your stomach, check in with your blood pressure, whatever. Listen, feel, and then if you any, any fear-based stuff comes up, just bring it up gently. But you have to love it. Love it. Thank you. I know because it's just trying to keep you safe. That's all it's trying to do, your fear-based fear ego mind. Just using whatever tools it's learned along the way to keep you safe, sane, and secure. 
and you take it up and out and you go over it and you say thank you quickly and then you put it to the side and put it down a little bit it's you kind of keep gathering it to itself you keep any of the fear stuff it is all ego mind stuff you keep gathering it to itself it's like you're organizing it and when you do that it makes it feel better um, and it also basically is telling you like I love you little ego but spirits in charge right now we're doing this right now um, so it's basically putting your making your spirit the alpha dog the alpha male in a pack or the alpha dog in a pack which is usually a female I have five dogs and the female is our alpha. And I heard that's pretty normal. Um, okay. So I'm just listening right now. Oh, one second. So I have this sweater. I know this is a tangent, but I have this sweater that I loved for um, a couple years. <laughs> I got it pretty cheap, but I only wore it like a few times. It's, um, it's cashmere actually. And it's a medium and I'm going to show it to you and whoever watches this video if you really want this sweater but I but don't don't just take it to get it I, I want this sweater to go to someone who really who feels the way I did when I got it this is like awesome okay I'm going to show you <laughs> it's a medium all right so it's got this old lady pattern happening in the center and it's the same on the back See, it's got this super old lady stuff happening on the front. And then it's got this like golden python thing happening on the sleeves. So it's the same front and back. All right. Here it is. If you think you love this sweater, please um, find me on Facebook and say, I love that sweater. The first person who wants it if you just message me and send me your address and then tell me that you love the sweater and tell me why you love the sweater because um, I would like to know why you love that why you love it and I'll just mail it out to you for free I do want it to go to someone who loves it okay a lot of stuff I give away but that's meant for someone else that's meant for someone and I'm ready to let it go okay so we're going to do this spirit-based meditation where we put our spirit in charge to get to know the difference between your spirit and your ego mind. You're going to feel the difference between your spirit, your ego mind, your body, okay, um, and your vision, okay. And right now I'm going to tell you, the spirit feels light. There's like a vibrational hum. You feel high, higher. Your body feels heavy, dense, solid. Your vision, your vision is going to feel like reality. So things are going to appear normal. Except that I'm going to have you play with being able to make yourself really big, make yourself really small, make yourself fly. Like if, let's say you're at the ocean. I'm going to say, you know, do something that you couldn't do in reality. So I want you to take that opportunity to fly, fly next to a pelican, pet it, fly, you know, um, dive down into the water, grab a crab or a fish, bring it up, you know, um, or jump into the top of a palm tree or beam yourself. If you're in your kitchen, you know, see if you can make yourself really tiny and stand on top of your refrigerator. This is important stuff because in the vision part, I want you to understand that you have control. Uh, you can do things. You can create. And when you use your mind powerfully, even though this is just going to be a meditation and it's just going to be, it's going to seem like it's for fun. It's actually not just for fun. It's important for you to understand because it's part of the way you get to be in a life that you're like, I created this amazingness and I'm really happy. And whatever I'm not happy with, I can discreate and create something better. So it's very important. So um, I can't tell you. So, so here's maybe what would might be disappointing to to Tracy. Anyone who wants to know, tell me what my, what's my spirit want me to do? Okay. 
well, you may not get a full-blown spiritual vision here. You know, you might. I've gotten a couple. I've gotten a few. But I'll tell you what. Um, I did not want. I, I had no desire to be married to an Italian person and have children and not fly. But now that I'm doing it, I love it. And my throat, my Hashimoto's thyroiditis. So when I prayed and, and said, I don't want to be on medication. I don't want to get my, I don't want the, the things that can possibly happen to your thyroid. And I believe a lot of women have that whole, just keep your mouth shut thing going on. Because it's like 20% of women have thyroid issues. And I think a lot of it has to do with, eh, just keep your mouth shut. So when I prayed and when I asked and when I said, I'll do anything to heal my thyroid 100% and get off all medication, which I am. I'm, I'm, it is. It's healed. It's healed 100% and I'm off all medication. But what came up is that I had to speak. You have to speak. You have to talk. One of the children that got killed on December 14th, Jesse, um, he told me, uh, he, he showed me me up in the tree in Tennessee. We have 65 acres in Tennessee. We were, try we were trying to move there. We are supposed to move there, but we can't sell this house. And Jesse showed me myself up in a tree and he goes, you have to come, you have to come down out of the tree and start teaching. And I was like, no. He goes, you don't just get to know all this stuff. Like, you don't just get to channel all this stuff and know all this stuff and then just keep it to yourself. You know, it's meant for you to share with other people. It's meant for you to pass it around and teach people, whoever is willing to listen or whoever feels like listening. This isn't all for you. Not You know, this wisdom or whatever you want to call it, it's not just for you. This is for everyone who is interested to know. So you have to come down out of the tree and start teaching. And luckily for me, um, and I was on, so I had to go and tell, well, I didn't have to, but I, so I said, okay, I made a vow. I made a promise to say yes to, if, if anyone ever asked me to go speak, I said yes. I was speaking, um, I don't remember if it's every week or every month at this place. I was doing these meditations, um, and every month I was speaking at this other place, and on television, I went on t TV twice. Oh, I was so scared. And then, I don't know if you could tell, if you ever watch the first one of these videos that I ever made, and I'm, my, I was just, I didn't want to do it. But I was pushed. I get pushed and like, put everything down. Go make a video right now. You're going to start a video blog. And I was not interested in it. And I look like such a bitch. In my first video that I did, I'm like, I'm not gonna. Oh, it's just terrible. My friend Lisa, luckily she was like, "No, that's you." But people will, the right people will see. So I was like, "Okay." So I've gotten over it. And you know, people have the choice. They they don't have to watch this. So um, I've gotten past a lot of the whole. And then my first few videos, when if I watched because I I watched some of them over and I've looked and I'm like, "Oh my god," I have this voice that's like, "Oh my god, shut up! You sound so stupid." <gasps> oh my god. Keep losing your train of thought. You sound so dumb. Oh my God, I can't even believe you're doing this. You shouldn't even put this video online. But I had to because I get pushed to speak. Um, and that's why, that's how I keep my thyroid healed. Is is I promised. I made a vow. And that's why I do what I do. And um, and I and I actually love writing a book. I can't believe that's true. But um, I really like writing. And uh, I just got to get it out of my head. Whatever I write, I just have to get it out of my head. Um, so, but back to the question of where, what's the end game, how we always think we want to know where we're going to be. Like if someone had told me you're going to be making videos and you're going to be putting them on YouTube for people to watch and you're going to be on Facebook and you're going to be, um, facilitating, you know, meditation groups on Facebook and you're going to be telling people psychic information that you get when you, you know, when you do your these healings and all this, I'd be like, I years two years ago I'd have been way too scared, and I would have been like, oh, you know, I can't do that. I just can't. I can't. And that's why our spirits only, our our life unfolds in the way that it's like you can't handle where you're going to be. 
if someone had said, you're going to be married to a guy, an Italian, whose family is going to hate you for a little while. Like hate. Because they're not going to get you. They're not going to get it. Because <laughs> you're totally different than they are. And, and his family's going to hate you for a little while. And you're going to have two kids. And you're going to stay home. You're not even going to work. And this and this and this. And, this, and you're going to be dependent on this guy. This 11-year-old Italian guy who doesn't doesn't believe in any of the stuff that you believe in. And if they had described what I'm actually living, I'd be like, oh, let me just kill myself now. Because that, that doesn't sound fun at all. Um, so you don't get to know. And like... Maybe where maybe I end up in a year from now, like speaking in front of like massive amounts of people. Um, that idea, like last year, would have been, I would I would just have sweated all my water out of my body. Like I couldn't have handled it. So the point is that just stay with your soul in and allow your life to open in divine timing. Just Wherever the roller coaster cart is, this moment, that's where you're supposed to be. Just trust that your spirit created the most beautiful ride for you. And if we, if they told you what was around the next bend, or when the next full, um, dip was, or when the ne it wouldn't be so fun. So please, 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 just chill. And the only thing you can do is to trust. I live in a perfectly evolving universe. Everything's happening for me, not to me. And um, I must be right where I'm supposed to be because that's where I am. And then you do your meditations. And when we do your meditations, you can get visions. And then when you then when you see the vision and you feel how you feel in your vision, like for me, I had this vision. I wasn't asking for a vision, but during one of my meditations, I had one vision when I was in my training of I was helped all these little kids. I so I didn't I didn't know I could teach kids to meditate, but I was teaching all these little kids with cancer how to meditate in this vision, and my third eye just opened up and I took it all in, and I was doing something with my hands. And I had all these little kids with cancer in front of me. And they, they all had that the cancer hair. Or they were bald but you have this little fluffy stuff. And they were all smiling to me. And I was smiling to them. And we all had our hands. They were following it. It's exactly what I was saying. And the, uh, the amount of energy in the room was unbelievable. Because this was before I even finished healing. Healer training. This was during healer training. And... Not only was I there with this vision, seeing it and feeling how it felt to be this person with that all this stuff was coming through, all this healing, I felt these children with cancer, with like um, like death sentences growing up, even though they were staying little in the vision, I could feel them growing up. I could feel the gratitude from them, from their parents, from their spouses, from their children. I had generations upon generations of people who don't exist yet, grateful for me, grateful for my, uh, uh, this is what I want to do, you know? And, um, and and I've known that this is what I want to do for a very long time, and so I, I want to do it. But every step that I have to take doesn't, it, it, if I try and decide, because I have, I'm like, okay, so I know what I want to do. So I've gone after it. I've tried. I've tried to, to go to hospitals. I've tried door slamming, slamming, slamming. I've tried to go to Montessori schools. I was allowed to teach meditation to my daughter's Montessori school, but nobody, else, you know, it hasn't hasn't opened up for anybody else. Um, so I, I have another way I'm going to try. That door may close again, too. We'll just have to see how it goes. Um, so the thing is... Um, I don't get to decide how. I don't get to decide how I get there. I get to see a vision and say yes to it. And um, I had this other vision um, not that long ago where I was in an Airstream camper and everyone close to me knows I'm obsessed. I wanted an Airstream camper 
since the first time I ever laid eyes on one. I, um, since tiny, I was like, that is the coolest freaking thing in the world. And I want to live in one and I want to have that. So I was just doing a meditation, just a regular meditation. I wasn't trying to have a vision, just like the other vision that I told you about. And all of a sudden I had this, I was in my airstream, my airstream, my beautiful new airstream with oyster leather interior. And I was on a chunk of acres that were right on the ocean. And I was writing, and I think I was writing a book and I was in perfect alignment while I was writing. While I was in my airstream, the door was open and I was just, the ocean air was coming in and everything was perfect. I felt like everything was perfect. And so since then, I've had a vision of 30 acres on the ocean where I create a healing. Um, well, I wanted a beach house. I thought I wanted a beach house. I felt the desire for a beach house. And... That door closed a little, but then it turned into this vision where I'm in an airstream where I'm like, oh my God, if I create a healing center that's on a chunk of acres on the ocean, then I can run uh, programs there. But, but not just me, other healers from all over the world could use it. And I want to have these boarding houses, the north and the south boarding house. So I, anyway, I like can feel this. It's like it started with the desire for a beach house and it's turned into something completely different. But if I knew the end game, I wouldn't have gone through the, the fun of the change. It's like, wow, bigger, wow, bigger. Oh, that, oh my God. Oh my God. That's fucking huge. That is huge. Uh, but if someone said, you're going to be speaking and you're going to create this incredible healing center on 30 acres right on the ocean with a you know labyrinth and with two boarding houses and you're going to do this and you're you're going to do all these cool things and you know i would immediately go into my human brain and say okay how am i going to do this when we do that it's not going to work because i only have 47 years worth of wisdom in the brain that i'm using to try and figure out how and when I let my spirit just show me what's the next step, or the cloud bank moves back. All the only effective way that the only way that works is for me to say, okay, I'm right where I'm supposed to be. Everything happens in divine timing. Everything's happening in my highest best interest at all times, no matter if I'm uncomfortable or not. Because doing these videos used to be severely uncomfortable. I actually hated it. And I hated the first video. I hated making the first couple. I don't hate it now. Because I love you people. And whoever's watching this, um, I really love anyone who's able to stand 53 minutes and 2 seconds of me talking the way I talk and sharing the way I think. Uh, because I'm trying to get something done. I am I have a vision and I'm just doing what I'm, I feel like I'm being pushed to do. Pushed, pushed. So basically, the, you know, the cloud bank moved back and there's a step which is make this video now. And then take that step and that takes that step. So it's not a straight line. It's not a straight line at all. And um, and that's all I'm going to say for now. And so the, the next video that I do is going to be the meditation. And please just do it. It's going to be weird. You're probably not going to want to do it in front of anyone because there's some weird breathing. And, um, and I couldn't have made, I could not have made the video I'm about to make. The, with the meditation I'm about to do, if it wasn't for the woman who asked me, who I love, asking me the question she asked me. And, um, and I want to make this video where I look like a weirdo now because I want her, Tracy, to completely understand how to get where she wants. Because I understand her question. And I can't answer her question. She has to do this video. She has to do this meditation multiple, multiple times. And then she'll get it. She'll get it. So I'm going to look like a weirdo in the next video. All right. And whoever wants the sweater, you know where to find me. Okay, love you. Love you, love you, love you.